Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today I will solve some problems that you will find in section number 4 that is on page number 1123. Let's begin, shall we? Always make sure that the book is in front of you. In this particular section you will see that we have 38 questions and you will also see that the first 30 questions are multiple choice questions which means that the first 10 are easy, the next 10 are medium, the last 10 are difficult. We're going to do today the first 10, the easy questions. They should go very fast. Unless I end up explaining too much stuff. Well, let's get going, shall we? So in the first one we are told, we are, the, we are being asked, when did, when did she finish her lunch? When did, this, when did she finish her lunch? And this is what we are this is what we are given. On the on the on the vertical axis we are measuring distance. Distance from the camp, it looks something like this. So this is three o'clock. Around here is two o'clock. And around here somewhere is one o'clock. And what we're measuring here is not the total amount of distance that she has traveled. It's not the total distance that she traveled, but rather how far it is at any given point in time from her camp base. She's camping and then she started walking from the camp. This is what it looked like. It looks to me that during this period, during this period of time, the distance from the camp was constant, which means she must not have been walking. This is the time when she stopped. This is the time that she started walking again. So when did she finish her lunch? She must have finished her lunch there, which, which looks like to me as 1.45. And the answer is, and the answer is C. Around uh, 1.45, she, start, she finished her lunch, looks like around 1.15 she began her lunch. She took a break for lunch for about half an hour for her, 1.15 to 1.45. That's what it seems like, and the reason we say that's what it seems like is because there is really no way to figure out the precise time. Number two. The question here is, what are the odds of choosing either a female under 40 or a male over 40. Out of the 25 people that are given to us, they are distributed such like this. Male, female, under 40, over 40, and we have 12, 2, which gives us a total of 14 men, 8, and 3, which means we have 11 females. And out of these 11 females and 14 males, what are the odds that if we were to pick one person at random, that that person is going to be first of all a female, and we have female, we have 11 of them, and she has to be under 40, under 40 there are 8 of them. Or, or the person that we picked at random is a guy who happens to be over 40, and over 40 there are 12, 2 guys. Out of a grand total of 25, and that's 10 over 25. As I said before, beginning sometimes I end up explaining way too much for a simple thing it is a simple thing of course for crying out loud it's number two on a scale of 30 on a scale of 1 through 30 is number two of course it's very easy 10 out of 25 is the answer the answer is B number three and number three we are given a graph that looks something like this, 200, 400, 600, 800, 
the story begins at around 600. It goes up for a while, then it comes down, then it stops right here somewhere. And these are these are album sales since debut. The debut was year zero, and that happens to be whatever the year happens to be. And since since the album was published, since its debut, 12 years, we kept track of the sales for 12 years since then, and that's what the sales looks like each year. And the question is, number three, the question is, of the four statements that are given to us, which of the four statements makes sense? And we can clearly see here, what we see here, that when the album was published at debut on year zero, they sold 600 albums, the sales kept going up for a while, and then the sales began to decline, and they drop there. That's what we see here. Answer choice A says, answer choice A says, sales increase each year. That is definitely not the case. Had the sale been increasing each year, it would have been an upward sloping curve throughout the entire time. Answer choice B says that the sales decrease each year. That is not the case either. There would have been a downward sloping curve throughout. Answer choice D says that we had a steady sales in D. I skip C. A steady sale, a case of steady sale would have been a horizontal line. In other words, we are selling 600 albums each and every year, year after year after year. It's a horizontal line. That's not what we're dealing with here. The answer is C. C says as the sales increase, sales increase until 2000 and then decrease. Number four. Number four. In number four, we are given a little chart here with different values of function, and let's see what we let's see what we are told. Well, first thing we notice is that we are told there is a linear function. In other words, the slope has to be constant, and these are the values: n values, one, two, three, four, and these are the value of the functions: negative two, one, four, and seven. Well, we can clearly see that from negative 2 to 1 is, a, is an increase of 3, 1 to 4 is an increase of 3, 4 to 7 is an increase of 3. They increase each time, each constant. Of course, increase is constant because it's a linear function. It goes up by 3 units. In other words, the slope is 3. The only answer choice, only one with slope 3, is answer choice C. That's the only answer choice with the slope 3. You don't have to waste your time looking at the intercept. It doesn't matter. That's the only one with the slope 3. Slope 3, we have four answer choices. A, B, C, and D. And these, these people are very clever. They give you four answer choices with the slope of 1, 2, 3, 4. What do you know? That is not how it works every time, obviously, you understand. In the next one, we're told to calculate 7% of 562 plus 5% of 602. Now, listen, I'm going to give you a quick pep talk here. Yes, I do know that calculator is allowed in this section. And if you want to reach for your calculator, and if you're hell-bent on, on converting this into Converting this exam into a freak show, be my guest. I'm just going to do it without it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the fact that you do not come up with a precise answer. Nobody cares whether your answer was precise or not, as long as you can recognize the right answer. There are four answer choices. If you look at the four answer choices, they are far enough apart. 140, 70, 40, 30, they are far enough apart. Precision is not required, as long as you can recognize the right answer. So. Having said that, let's begin our work. So we're looking at 7% of 562, 7% of 562 
plus, we have to figure out this part, we know the 10%, we know 10% of 600, even though it's 602, I'm going to pretend it's 600, we know the 10% is 60, and therefore 5% has to be 30. I shouldn't say plus here, let's keep the two separate here. 5% is 30, so this part is 30. Or to be more precise, it is approximately 30, but that's close enough. Okay, 5% of 30, 5% of 602 is going to be slightly over 30 because we don't have 600, we 602. So that was the easy part. Let's do this one. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that this is 560, not 62. I'm going to knock out the zero. Then we have a 10 and a 65. Well, I'm going to go one more time. I'm going to pretend. I'm going to pretend that five. First, I pretended that first I pretended the 562 was in fact 560. I'll change my mind. I'm going to pretend that. 562 is approximately 550. Why 550? So we can divide by 5. Divided by 5, this gives us 2 and this gives us 11. There we go. So we have 11 times 7. 11 times 7 is 77. Divided by 2, I'm going to pretend that that is 40. 40 plus 30, the answer is around 70. As long as, as, long as there aren't too many answer choices close to 70, you're done. And what do you know? There's only one answer choice close to 70. Obviously it's not 140 or 40 or 30. The answer is B. Number 6. In number 6 we're given two polynomials. 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 and 5x squared minus 2x minus 6. It's a very simple, very straightforward problem. All they want us to do is add the two polynomials. Let's do that. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 is x squared minus 7x minus 4. There you go. And that is our answer choice A. Number 7. Number seven, we have three fifths W, we are told is equal to four quarters. Three fifths W is four quarters. Somehow we have to get rid of this three fifths, and we're going to do so by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal, five thirds. There you go. Now three fifths takes out the five thirds which was the whole point, so that we can have the W by itself. And here we lift it 5 times 4, which is 20, over 9. And that is answer choice D. That was number 7. Number 8. Number 8. Average number of students per class. We're going to use letter Y in this example, in this problem, to represent the average number of students per class in our school. And that number, that quantity is represented by letter Y. And the relationship is such, is this, such as this. Y is equal to 0.56x plus 27.2 where x represents the number of years since school opened. In the problem it says since 2000, I'm pretending that 2000 is when the school opened. So what this relationship tells us is that, first of all, what it tells us is that when x is zero, that's the year that the school opened, is when x is zero, we had approximately 27 students per classroom at that time when we opened the school. 27 students per classroom and since then every year it goes up, every year. X is the number of years, it goes up by about 0.56. Each year the average number of students in the class goes up by about 0.6. Right there, 4.5 if you like. And that is answer to see. The question was what does this 0.56 represent? The answer is 0.56 represents the increase in the average 
number of students per class each year each year and of course we cannot have an increase of 0.5 we cannot have an increase of 0.5 very difficult to find half a kid what that means is that on average in our school since we opened when we opened at that time we had approximately 27 students per classroom and since then it seems like every two years the average number of students in the classroom goes up by one. We have one more students in the classroom every two years. Number nine. In number nine we are given, we are told rather, the 25 meter is traveled in 13.7 seconds. The question is how much distance are we going to walk in four minutes? How much how much distance are we going to walk in four minutes? Again, one more time, if you are hell bent on reaching for your calculator and doing the precise calculation, be my guest. But as I've told you many, many times in the past, we are not performing an open heart surgery. Precision is not required. Nobody is asking us for a precise answer. All we are required to do is be able to recognize the right answer. If you can recognize the right answer, or in other words, if you are able to recognize the three wrong answer, that's all there is. The battle is won. Why, why precision? I don't see it. So let's do it, okay? If you want to use the calculator, as I said before, knock yourself out. So here we have meters and seconds. We are told that we do 25 meters in 13.7 seconds. I'm going to pretend it's 14. And the question is, how many meters are we going to go in 4 minutes? 4 minutes has 60 times 4 is 240. So this is what we're dealing with. Therefore, x is going to be equal to 25 times 240 divided by 14. x is equal to 25 times 240 over 14. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. So 14 becomes a 7 and 240 becomes 120. And let's divide top and bottom by 7. I meant to say divide top and bottom by 2. Let's divide top and bottom by 7. 7 is going to go away. 25 has 3 7s. Sevens. 3 7s sevens are 21. After we take away 21 from 25, we have a remainder of 4. I'm going to pretend that the remainder of 4 is in fact the remainder of 3 and a half. And 3 and a half is half of 7. That's what we're looking for. You understand? In other words, in other words, this quantity is 25. I pretended that it was 24 and a half. 24 and a half has exactly 3 and a half 7s. 7 plus 7 plus 7 is 21. And another half of 7 is 3 and a half. 3.5 times 120, 3 times 120 is 360, and half of 120 is 60. We're looking for some answer that is around 420. Now is the time to look at the answer choices. And the answer choices, as you see, we have 150, 450, 700, and 1400. Obviously, it is not 150 or 700. The answer is B. This, this 360 came from 3 times 120, and this 60 came from half times 120. You see? Half times 120 and 3 times 120. We're going to stop right here. We're going to pick up on the next page, number 10 and 11, when we meet tomorrow. Okay? I know. Oh, in the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, if you wish to get hold of me, if you would like to work with me, if you would like to hire me as your tutor to help you get, get ready for the exam, you can reach me by sending me an email. Go to my website, keshwaniprep.com. Okay? Bye now.